Hello, um, this is a presentation of a 3D printed motorcycle that I designed uh, over the last years and I'll show you some of the specific things about the concept and also something about the 3D printing itself and how things work. So first of all I would like to show you the suspension. As you see there is a, a shock absorber under the engine. And I will show you how that works. Gear segment that is connected to the swinging arm. What you see here, so when I move this up and down you can see that the shock absorber is moving. And these are the exhaust pipes. As you see, they're quite thick. So in, inside the exhaust pipes, there will be uh, insulation and a perforated, perforated pipe to uh, take away uh, some of the noise. And the turbocharger itself will, of course, take away some noise as well. So here you can see the turbocharger, which is very near to the engine so it doesn't lose a lot of heat and pressure. On this side is the air filter behind that cover here and behind the, the air filter is the intercooler and the air from the turbocharger, the hot air from the turbocharger goes into this box here And it's a plenum chamber, so the pulsing from the turbocharger will be absorbed inside this plenum chamber. And from the plenum chamber, air goes into these silicone hoses, which is now plastic, into the fuel injection uh, unit. Behind there is a Brembo type. And uh, I'll show you the other things afterwards. And the internals of the engine is, it's all gear driven, so you, have, you don't have a chain here, you have gears running from the clutch up to the top of the cylinder. And uh, the adjustment of the valves is hydraulic, so there should be no maintenance other than changing the oil and the filter. And the oil filter is placed here in the back of the bike. Okay, so now I'll put on the rear wheel, as you can see. Uh, and this, the printer I use is a normal tabletop FDM printer, and it's quite small. The volume is uh, 200 times 200 times 200. So most of these parts, the bigger parts like engine casing, cylinder, cylinder head, etc., tank wheels are made of several pieces. For instance, the wheels or the rims are made out of 13 parts that are glued together. So as you see, I can show you here. Since you have six uh, spokes, so to say, they are each of them are. I don't know if you can see it, but here, here is the actual section right there. So there's a center piece here, and these six rims or sections here are glued onto that part there, and the other half of the rim. Which is this is also made in six pieces. So I glue first. I take make a complete half rim on both sides. I put the tire on, and then I glue the rim to get the rim bits together with the tire on. Because if if I was to make the rim com the complete rim without the tire inside, you would break the 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 rim because of the it's quite heavy to break the tire over the the bead 
that's the only way to do it. So there is no valve in the tire or so it's uh, what should I say there's no air in it either so it's completely soft but it doesn't deform so it's there's no point in having air. As you can see there is no fork it's a cantilever design so you have this single sided swing arm that works up and down like so. I haven't put on the shock absorber yet but I'll do that later but first of all I will show you how it actually turns. The swing arm goes up and down of course and this one is free to move to each side. There is a 20 degrees movement of the wheels to each side so it's a total of 50 degrees of course and and on this machine I have used standard steel bearings so there is all the bearings and screws of course are of, of steel so it will turn oh, quite easily and there's also bearings in here so you can see how things are working. The brake system is a single disc and it's uh, fixed to the hub. Um, the disc is from uh, Buell. I will be making my own discs eventually. Uh, the caliper is a eight cylinder uh, piece with uh, four brake discs, no, uh, brake pads, and will be my own, uh, own uh, production. Um, most of the machine, as you see now, is made um, according to the equipment that I have in my shop. Uh, you, will, you won't see any bent tubing because I don't have a tube bender. So the only tubing in fact on this machine is the exhaust pipes and they are straight. Otherwise most of the things you see here will be milled from uh, aluminium or from aluminium blocks like the tank. The, this part here will be milled from a, uh, from a block and the back side also and then I will weld it together. And the same with the plenum chamber uh, machine and weld. Uh, the way I will do it is I will rough machine it first and then I will weld it and then I will finish machine it later on so you don't have any uh, distortion due to the welding because if you finish machine first and weld then everything will bend and twist. Uh, I've already bought the aluminium blocks. I have quite a good workshop with CNC machinery. I have a CNC lathe and a CNC machining center and manual machines. I have a small uh, foundry with induction furnaces, welding equipment, TIG, MIG, and of course plasma cutters and so on and so on, and 3D printers. So I have all the uh, machinery I need to make this machine. Uh, as you will see, some of the screws are missing and there are some covers missing here and there, here and there. And I haven't been so uh, obsessed about putting the right screws in. So it's just a matter of putting things together like the screws here on the front wheel. I'm going to make uh, the bolts. I'm going to make some neat ones myself. These are just off the shelf thing and they're bought somewhere. So I will make some, make some neater. It's the purpose of this 3D printed machine. It's not to have a show bike. It's more for my own uh, verification if things fit together and it's easier to determine how things will turn out when you actually see it in real life. So this is what I call a pre-prototype and it's very very useful and it's very um, giving in such a way that you can actually have a bike made quite easily without, a, without investing a, a lot of money and it's and it gives you a good visual indication of what you're going to see when you, you finish machining it. So it's a good insp inspiration.
I only use ABS when I print and uh, that has a tendency to warp and twist so some of the parts are not what should I say 100% aligned so there is some work when you print stuff like this to get things uh, to uh, look okay. Uh, I haven't worried too much about what should I say the the quality of the surfaces if there are some blemishes here and there I'm not too concerned about that the, my my thought is not to have a as I mentioned earlier a showcase bike but more of a for my own uh, uh, for my own use and break and bore speedometer fuel cap it's a one seater as you see change. 